claim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad that you've chosen to worship with us as we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Our traditional worship, one of our six weekly services, will begin in a few moments. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your free spirit. God bless you this morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. It is good to be gathered as God's people on this Valentine's Day, uh, which is also the first Sunday in the season of Lent. And so welcome to worship here at our Saviors. And a special welcome to those who join us via our TV broadcast ministry. We are, uh, have been back up on air for the last, uh, last Sunday and now this Sunday. And so we welcome you uh, to worship here at our Saviors as well. If you are a visitor or guest, uh, welcome. And, and please introduce yourself to me or one of the ushers. And you can uh, go over to the... Um, information center and pick up some information about our saviors and of course we invite you to join us for worship again we do have a few announcements before we begin worship this morning this past week on ash wednesday we entered into the season of lent our lenten theme this year comes from john's gospel the sixth chapter verse 48 where jesus declares i am the bread of life and so during midweek Lenten worship services, we will be looking at this sixth, chap sixth chapter of John's Gospel. A reminder that midweek Lenten worship services are at noon and 6.30, and both of those services are held here in the sanctuary. And as a congregation, we've been challenged to raise $10,000 for the ELCA World Hunger Appeal. So all of our Lent, special Lenten offerings or designated Lenten offerings will go toward this goal of, of $10,000. The overall goal of all the congregations who have been invited to participate is to raise over $2 million to help, uh, to help deal with hunger in our world. There are also other, uh, other things available to help you during the season of Lent. There are devotionals available as well as small group studies that you can use, uh, and all of those are available at the Information Center or in the church office. Our Wednesday night schedule, because of Lent, looks a little bit different, and so confirmation and Wednesday school uh, will begin at 6 o'clock, but instead of beginning in the Celebrate Center for launch, uh, three-year-olds through third grade will begin in the labyrinth room. Fourth and fifth graders will begin in their rooms downstairs, and then confirmation will begin in the fellowship hall at 6 o'clock. And if you're looking for a church home and would like to join OSL, you can come to our Exploring Membership Orientation and Brunch, which will be held next Saturday, February 20th, and the times for that are 8.30 uh, to 11.30, and child care will be provided. And finally, there are a couple of things to note. <clears throat> of, of note that are coming up this week. First, the Friendship Club will meet on Tuesday at 10.30 in the Friendship Room. And then the Luther College Collegiate Choir will be singing during the 6.30 Lenten Worship Services this Wednesday, February 17th. And now I'd invite uh, Janice Peterson to share with us a Temple Talk. Good morning. I am part of the Caring Ministries Board, and as a board, we provide holistic health, education, and opportunities to the community of our saviors. You are all invited to grab your tennis shoes, put on your swimming trunks, pick up your Bible, anything to increase your activity and devotion time during this Lenten season. Last year during Lent, we successfully walked to Jerusalem. This year, we are walking South Dakota, and there is much to see and learn about our great state. Check out the South Dakota displays and trivia in the gathering space. This is easy. Keep track of your miles that you walk, bike, swim, and your devotion time, and report the miles weekly to Deb Harlan, either by phone or email. And let's see how many times we can walk around South Dakota in the next six weeks. 
To stay motivated, join us on Wednesday afternoons at 4.30 in the lower level for a 30-minute walk. See you there. Thank you, Janice. Those are all of our verbal announcements. As always, there are many things happening in the church. We do encourage you to look through your bulletin as well as the intercom and uh, the website and the social media uh, sites for all that's happening here at your congregation. At this time, I invite you to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. We are gathered together this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us take this time to share God's peace with one another. We continue our worship as we sing our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of abundant riches, when you asked to give everything to follow Jesus, the rich man faltered. Give us the courage to give everything that we have to you, knowing that what you offer is more valuable than all the riches in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from Psalms. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The the decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come. Follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, We have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or fields or children for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Word of God, word of life. I invite any kids to come forward at this time for Kid Talk. Come on up, guys. I saw a few of you coming in late, so I know you're out there. It's one of those days. Come on up. Pastor Sammy's prepared some stuff for us, so I don't don't want you to miss out on this today. Yeah, come on up. Come on. (laughs) Oh, there we go. Well, I had all boys at the first service, and now it looks like I have all girls coming up. Well, all right. How are you guys today? Good. Good, good. So... 
Daryl just read the gospel lesson for today. And it's about a rich man. And this man had lots of money and possessions. And he asked Jesus, what do I need to do to, for you to love me to inher- so that I can inherit eternal life? Now, do you know what eternal life means? It means that after we die, we will have a new life. We will have life forever. And that's what Jesus promises us. So I'm going to read this uh, story from the Star- Spark Story Bible. And it's the, the title is A Rich Man's Question. And as I read it, I want you to think about his heart. What's the rich man focused on? So a rich man asked Jesus, what do I have to do for God to love me forever? I think I'm doing everything God wants me to do. So will God always love me? Sell everything you have, Jesus said. Give all that money to the poor, then come and follow me. The rich man was shocked. Sell everything? He had lots and lots of stuff. And so he walked away from Jesus sad. Jesus said, it's hard for greedy people to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it's easier for a lumpy, bumpy camel to walk through the itty-bitty eye of a needle. But don't forget... For God, all things are possible. God loves us always and no matter what. Nothing we do gets us God's love and there is nothing we can do to lose God's love. It's forever. The rich man thought that what he did and his possessions would would get him to heaven. He thought that's what he needed to do in order to have God love him. But the rich man's heart was in the wrong place. It was focused on the wrong thing. And so, Jesus had to do something. He had to change his heart. Now, do you know what that is? A butterfly, right? You see that butterfly? Does a butterfly begin as a butterfly? What does it begin as? A caterpillar, that's right, a caterpillar. Or as one of the little girls in my previous congregation called it, a caterpillar. Uh, no, a caterpillar. And so the butterfly, or, it, or the caterpillar then, become, forms a chrysalis and becomes a butterfly. But the caterpillar doesn't just up and decide one day, I think I want to be a butterfly. And so I'm going to form this and I'm going to change myself into a, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. What happens is God changes the caterpillar into a butterfly. That's what happens. And so what Jesus is talking about with the heart is that it's, it's not up to us to change our hearts. But that's what Jesus came to do. In fact, he came to give us a new heart. A heart that goes, uh, we, we have our old heart of the caterpillar and he gives us a new heart of the butterfly. And so one of the ways that we can then celebrate that is through the, we're using the word alleluia. Thanks be to God. But during the season of Lent, we're kind of in that moment, in that place of being in the cocoon, in the chrysalis. And so we don't say hallelujah during Lent. We bury that word. And then we bring it out in full force on Easter as we hear God's promise in Jesus that he forgives us and he gives us a new life and a life that will be eternal. So Pastor Sammy has made these. And I'm going to pass these out to you, okay? You can have one. And you have one, and you have one, and then I have this big basket of crayons here, and you can take some crayons, and I want you to take, uh, take this all back to your seats, and then you can color this, you can color this side, and then you can even color the other side, and when you're done, there's a basket all the way in the back for you to put those in, and then on Easter, we're going to bring these butterflies out, all right? Can you do that for me? All right, so we're going to have an echo prayer, and then you're going to pick up some crayons, and you'll return back to your seats. Congregation, please join us. We fold our hands and bow our heads, and I will pray a few words, and you pray them back. Dear God, thanks for sending Jesus, who gives me a new heart. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up, girls. Make sure you get your crayons.
And if you know of anybody, Pastor Samuel will have a bunch of extras of these for others to use. We continue our worship as we sing our hymn of the day. Dear hearers of the word of God, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This story from Mark's Gospel, what a sad story. It's a story about a man, a good and faithful man who wants what every believer wants, eternal life. The assurance, the promise that the future beyond this life is secure. And up to the time when he encountered Jesus, he was probably feeling pretty good about his chances of, what, of getting what he so desired. He had lived an upright life. He had kept all the commandments ever since he was old enough to know what those commandments were. And what's more, he had become a man of means, and in those days, you see, wealth was seen as a sign of God's looking upon you favorably. So at least on the surface, this man was a prime candidate for the Believer's Hall of Fame. And then he met Jesus. Once he reviewed with Jesus how faithfully he had kept the law of Moses, Jesus simply said, you lack one thing. Now, imagine what the man must have thought. As I've worked with this text, I've imagined him thinking, yes, it's just one more thing after all that I've done. It's just one more thing that I need to do. I'm almost there. All I have to do is cross this last thing off of my how to get to heaven list and I'll be in like Flynn. But Jesus continues, doesn't he? My friend, the one thing you need to do is show me your love for me. Show me where your heart is. Go back home and Sell everything that you have and give that money to the poor, the people you routinely 
ignore the people you think have done something in their lifetime to deserve their plight of suffering and want. And then come and follow me. Can't you just imagine how that man's countenance sagged at that point? I mean, he'd gone from thinking that he was nearly home free to slinking back home heartbroken because Jesus had just asked the impossible of him. What a terribly sad story indeed. We can't help but be rooting for the guy because by all accounts, he looks like he's got it all together. And if he doesn't qualify for heaven, where does that leave us? I mean, we're a lot like this rich guy, wanting to do things right, thinking that we do need to do something. We need to live a certain way to get the good things that God promises to the faithful. But so often, our lives are stories of close, but not quite. When Jesus asks to see our hearts, we crumble in shame and defeat. Like the high school student who grows up in a rock-solid home. She's been confirmed at church, and unlike her classmates in confirmation, she has stayed active in church after she was confirmed. She goes to youth group every week. She goes on mission trips in the summer. She even helps serve communion at church. And at school, she's a leader in and outside the classroom. She does it all. Her peers look up to her. She's a young woman with strong moral convictions and an even stronger character. In fact, her friends would say that she's overqualified for the Believer's Hall of Fame. But when Jesus looks into her heart... He sees a young woman who is obsessed with maintaining that perfect image she has worked so hard to achieve. And he says, you lack one thing. Or maybe it's like the older adult who's in church all the time, has been all of his life. In fact, he couldn't imagine doing anything else on a Sunday morning He has served on almost all of the boards and committees at church at one time or another. He has supported faithfully, financially, the church above and beyond most other members. And he knows his Bible inside and out. He's a real pillar of the church, truly qualified for that believer's hall of fame. But when Jesus looks into his heart, He sees a man whose support for the church lasts only as long as things are to his liking. When the church council suggests a change in the worship schedule or even the worship style in order to reach more folks in the community, or when the council suggests that the amount of money that the church gives away to support ministry beyond the four walls of the church be increased, the man throws a fit, stops giving his offering, and threatens to leave the church altogether. When Jesus sees that man's heart, he declares, you lack one thing. Or it could be like the single mom who also attends church all the time, brings her kids along as well. She's got them enrolled in Sunday school and confirmation. She tries her level best to be a role model for her kids, using the same values she was taught by her parents. Her faith runs deep, and on the outside she appears to be another fine candidate for the Believer's Hall of Fame. But when Jesus looks into her heart, 
He sees a young woman who struggles with insecurity and loneliness and vulnerability. Two years after her divorce was final, she met another man. They dated for a short period of time, and then she asked him to move in with her and the kids. When Jesus sees her heart, he sees a person whose desire for companionship and intimacy is greater than living by the values she grew up with. And he says, you lack one thing. What's sad about this story in Mark's gospel and these stories I've shared with you and really what's sad about our stories is that when it comes down to it, earning that inheritance of eternal life is impossible for every one of us. Regardless of how many brownie points we think we've accumulated over our lifetime, regardless of how good a person we think we've become, gaining that ultimate goal of a life spent in eternity with a loving and gracious God is beyond our reach. It's beyond our striving. And it's beyond our reach because it is beyond the intent of God's law. The rules that God has given us to follow were never intended to be a way for us to climb the stairway to heaven or to put us in God's good graces. Instead, these commandments, these laws, these rules were intended to get us outside of ourselves, our wants and our desires, and get us focused on God and our neighbor. They are the way that our hearts can be brought into alignment with God's will, that we might go all in on a life of service and self-sacrifice, actually choosing to be last rather than first. Living our lives by God's commands only as a way to earn God's favor, to convince God that we really do deserve that ultimate prize, will in the end lead to a life that is turned in on itself it soon enough becomes all about me. You heard it in the question the man asked Jesus, what must I do to receive eternal life? And when that happens, it's all over. Sin has a grip on us at that point and we find ourselves separated from God's goodness and grace. And when you think about it, there isn't anything more sad than that. Still, there is hope to be found in this story. Did you hear it? It came just before Jesus pronounced to the man, you lack one thing. The story in Mark reads, Jesus looking at him, loved him, and said, you lack one thing. Jesus loved that sinful man. Even though he had looked into the man's heart and found it more committed to his accumulated wealth than following Jesus, he did not condemn that man. Rather, he sympathized with the man's struggle to live a faithful life. He understood that the path to eternal life, if it ever depends on a person's ability to keep God's commandments, will ultimately be a dead end road. But, Jesus said, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to granting eternal life, what is impossible for people to achieve is entirely possible for God to freely give. And that's the hope 
I am called to proclaim to you today. Jesus looks down upon us as we struggle day to day to live our lives faithfully. He peers into our hearts and he sees there our divided interests, our compromised values, our rationalized excuses, our wanting to be first rather than last. And still he loves us. He does not condemn us. Instead, he proclaims with arms outstretched, for God, all things are possible. What must you do to inherit eternal life? In all honesty, that's the wrong question to ask. Simply believe in a God who knows everything there is to know about you and still gives you that gift of eternal life through his own son, Jesus Christ. And with that now crossed off your list, you are truly free to follow Christ, to love God and your neighbor with everything, everything you've got. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith in this God who gives us salvation, though we do not deserve it. And so with the whole church on earth, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Living God, we know that we cannot save ourselves through our works and our possessions, yet we try to find our hope and comfort in them. Give us faith to trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, alone, the one who gives us salvation according to his divine goodness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, be with all who suffer during these cold months. Use us to help feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give shelter to those who are homeless. Open our eyes to the needs all around us and guide us to help in any way that we can. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, be with all who are sick. We pray especially for those who are or have been in the hospital. For Shirley Grimes, Harlan Guthmiller, Ron Witte, Edna Anderson, John Nelson, Janet Shelver, and those we name before you in our hearts. Grant healing according to your mercy, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Living God, we pray for all who mourn the death of a loved one. For Marcia Millage and family upon the death of her brother-in-law, Everett Gulbranson. For the family of Karen Schrader as they mourn her death. For Arnie and Judy Zuger and family upon the death of Judy's sister, Lorene Dieter. And for Stan and Jan Saganus and family upon the death of Stan's father. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Living God, bless all marriages this Valentine's Day weekend. Bless husbands and wives, sons and daughters, and all families according to your divine mercy and goodness. Lord, in your mercy. 
For it is into your hands, gracious God, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we now give to God our offerings, what God has first given us. Good morning. We are doing monthly talks about each ministry. This week, it's worship, and it's me. I uh, am so thankful to represent our staff, our team of uh, worship area. And we wanted to say thank you to all of you for your gifts making a difference. First of all, by supporting this building, this place we call Our Savior's Lutheran Church, all of the equipment, all of the instruments, the enormous music library that we have is a wonderful space that is used not only by our people, but by outside groups as well. The Sioux Empire Brass, the Prairie Winds, the Prairie Song Choir, the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra, the South Dakota Youth Symphony Orchestra, Augustana, and guests like Luther College this Wednesday night at our 6.30 p.m. service, and this Saturday night at 7 o'clock, there'll be a, a concert here by Carthage College from Wisconsin, who will also sing at our 8.45 a.m. worship at Festive next week. But this building is not the only reason that we give you thanks. We give you thanks because of the people that it inspires to worship here as well. We are blessed with a wonderful staff, a staff that trickles down to wonderful ensembles, our senior choir, response singers, bell choir, children's choirs, the Celebrate Band, and all of the instrumentalists that come to play and, and help us lead you in worship. We're so blessed to have them. But not only them, we also have wonderful deacons, ushers, communion assistants, worship and sound technical people, the TV ministry, greeters, food service, all of these people help remove distractions so that you can do what you're here to do. What am I here to do? Well, this is something that has been a bother if some, for me for a while. Listen to this. I attend Saturday night. I go to festive, or we are celebrate people. Well, instead of those answers about where you go to worship, how about if we say, I worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church, because worship is the work of the people. We come to do worship, not go to worship. So thank you for your gifts making a difference, and go mad, make a difference. Thank you. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Come, for all is now ready.
please stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for gathering and feeding us here at, a, at your table of mercy. Release us now to go on our way in these 40 days, ready to see our work as prayer, ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We Thanks invite you to join God. us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.